Right here, we have a giant magnifying glass, which burns hot enough to spontaneously combust paper, cook eggs and meat, and even melt metal. But I'm recording this in the future, and I haven't even built this yet. So let's go build it. In order to build a giant magnifying glass, I would first need to come into contact with a giant lens. And as it turns out, a 44 inch TV was the perfect place to look. <laughs> Two inch screws, those are big. <laughs> Yo, yo, what are you doing? Do I need this? What am I supposed to watch TV on, man? After this, can we You see, old TVs, particularly rear projection TVs, contain a thin sheet lens called a Fresnel lens, which creates some really interesting effects. Here you go. Oh my god. Get that. Alright, there you are. Normally, when light passes through a flat lens, it passes straight through without bending. However, when the lens has curvature, the light bends as it comes out the other side, and the light will eventually meet at one point. Now you may be wondering, if a Fresnel lens is flat, like you're seeing on your screen right now, how does it bend? And the answer occurs only when you look at the screen on a microscopic level. On a Fresnel lens, instead of having one big curve, the curve is split into many different ridges. Thus, the light still converges on one point while maintaining a flat profile. But as you'll find out later in the video, finding this point of convergence can be really, really difficult. Wow, okay, after all that yapping, I was finally able to remove the screen. I heisted the speakers as well, and the mirror too. I'll be using these in another project soon. With the screen removed, it was time to test. Ooh. Oh, that works. And you can actually tell as I move the screen around that the focal point goes in and out of focus on the ground. Look how bright that is. I can't even look. That gets so bright. If I wanted the screen to stop bending, I would need to assemble a frame. Luckily, I had some wood left over from my guillotine, but how would I cut it? Well, my friend, do you have any last words? I didn't kill those children. I swear, they were already in my basement. Shut up, you. You're going straight back to where you came from. With the wood cut, I suddenly realized that the perfect frame was there all along. The original TV frame would be perfect as a starting layout. So I took the plastic frame and started cutting it. And believe it or not, power tools are just better in every single way. Even if they just move so fast that they literally melt the plastic away. It's melting. And it took me a bit, but I was able to completely reassemble the Fresnel lens into the original frame. And as soon as that was done, it was as if the wood was drawn straight to the frame on its own. But now I had another problem. How was I gonna cut the wood for the base? I mean, I can't reuse the guillotine. I already made that joke. Right. Wait, this isn't even the right piece. Bro, it'll be fine, just trust me. See? After practicing my Taekwondo skills, all that was left to do was assemble the base. Now, my original plan was to just use these metal corner brackets, but they weren't stable enough. I may be a crap engineer, but even I could tell they weren't strong enough. So, reluctantly, I cut some extra support beams, and the final stand was way better. I feel like there's a lesson somewhere in here. With the frame and base complete, the only thing standing between me and the power, power of the, the sun, sun was two bolts from Home Depot. So, I hoisted the lens up on my shoulder, and the race was on. And after pretending to screw the bolts in for a few seconds, it was finally complete. Yo, I'm so happy with this. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. We're testing this right now. My beautiful contraption is complete. And I think it's time to test it, don't you think? The sun is coming out at like really variable periods. It was out, now, now it's out again. And of course I have my safety glasses as well. to burn it. I feel proud of myself. No. <laughs> no way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I feel like a caveman who just discovered fire. Oh, that was like red ash. Oh my god. I'm turning into Justin Trudeau. <laughs> it's actually still on fire. No way. Well, it was clear my giant magnifying glass could at least light wood on fire. But we'd have to wait until tomorrow for the real testing to start. All right, guys, it is a new day with my son.
As I was saying, it's a brand new day with my extreme death laser. Very, very sunny out today. All right, so you gotta make it perpendicular with the sun. We're starting out with a gauntlet. Paper into wood. Then we're gonna see if we can burn real Canadian Canada dry. Then we're gonna coat the wood in oil. And finally, I've got this cast metal. I don't know what type of metal it is. I started off with paper and things were immediately not going well. It would not burn. My sky death laser would have to heat the paper to over 451 degrees Fahrenheit if I wanted it to burn. But just as my hopes were down, this happened. Hey, uh, if the paper burns and wants you to subscribe. Oh my God. Oh, look at that. You guys know what that means. And honestly, in retrospect, I don't know why I doubted myself. I was able to light the wood the previous day and today was no different. Lighting the wood was a piece of cake. But as I moved on to the Canada Dry, the unexpected happened. Oh, it's so beautiful out. How could it possibly be raining everywhere as I'm recording? It was as if a god himself didn't want my project to move forward. So I took a little break from the Canada Dry, and as soon as the sun came back out, I decided to switch to the oil and wood. The sun has finally come back out, and that means it's finally time to do wood and oil. I don't know what it's gonna do. Hopefully something cool. I've got the wood, I've got the oil. Please but I am excited. Oh, it's boiling. Immediately it's boiling. Hey, there we go. The oil began boiling almost instantly. It is really, it is red hot. Oh, it's still, it's still on fire. And with that incredible success, I was determined to make the Canada Dry explode. And at the most unexpected moment, Oh my god, you distracted me. You scared me so bad. It like, it soaked the screen. And destroyed my man, it's boiling. Needless to say, I was at an all time high. I don't think at this point, anything could bring me down. Right? I don't think I can explain the dread that I was experiencing in this moment. Through clouds that wouldn't subside, cold wind, and suboptimal death laser angles, I just kept trying to melt the metal. But it felt impossible. And suddenly it made sense. Because when I touched the outside, it wasn't even metal. Fake metal. You fake it. The outside was some sort of paint, and it was completely screwing up the experiment. So with my chin hung low, I retired for the day. I started the next day with hope. I planned on doing everything better, starting with the angle of the lens. Using a pool stick, the shadow shows if the angle of the lens is perpendicular to the sun. At a 90 degree angle, the sun rays would hit the lens most optimally, allowing most of the energy to go straight to the pinpoint. I also started again with the teaspoons, which are seemingly made out of some sort of soft metal. If the spoons were ever going to melt, it was now or never. Ow! Spoon really hot! Turns out it was never. The spoons were simply too hard to do anything. Spoon very hot, but spoon not bend. Spoon bend. <clears throat> Desperate, I moved to aluminum foil. You see, aluminum has a melting point of 650 degrees Celsius. Not too much higher than wood, is what I thought. But what I only realized right now, as I'm writing this, is that wood burns at 600 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I wasn't even close, but I wasn't going to give up. Part of the problem was that the aluminum was simply too shiny. Thus, a ton of the light was being reflected off. So I tried blackening the aluminum using soot from a candle. The soot burned off. Do you know what temperature soot burns at? 600 degrees Celsius. That means the surface was getting up to near melting temperatures, burning off, and then promptly lowering in temperature. My one saving grace was that the aluminum, seemingly softer, was much easier to break under the light. Now nobody likes a sad ending to a story. So utterly defeated, but with a grumbly stomach, I decided my final subject would be an egg. No, it fell. So I sat there and cooked my egg. I don't know about you, but I'd say that's pretty cooked. Well, that about wraps it up. If you like what you saw, even though the metal, I mean it technically melted, but you know, subscribe for more.